you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FBC News, I'm Jackie Spade. In this bulletin, Fiji needs a marketplace with new innovative ideas to keep moving forward. Army officer calls on public to assist investigations into alleged seditious acts. And Sudelpa parliamentarian to decide on deadline tomorrow. Fiji needs a marketplace with new and innovative ideas in order to keep moving forward. Speaking at the CPA Congress in Nandi today, Acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayum said, professionals in Fiji should have the ability to come out in public space and be able to give a professional opinion on matters of national interest. Ritika Pratap reports. Speaking to a room full of accountants and professionals of the business sector, Acting Prime Minister Aya Sayed Kayum urged them to come forward and share their ideas and opinions on matters affecting the country. But if we want to move ourselves to the next stage of development and want to take advantage of the very good economic platform that we are on, we need to create that marketplace of new ideas. We need to be able to come out and break out of the shell of the past and say, look, I'm giving this as my professional view, as my opinion, because the more ideas we have in the marketplace, the more ideas that we as government get, the better it is for us to make informed decisions. Sayed Kayum also had a word for businesses who are in the process of making their budget submissions to the government. We have businesses writing in and saying, make this duty free, make sure we get tax concessions, make sure our, uh, our write-offs can be carried off, or sorry, our losses can be carried forward for the next 12 or 15 years. But there's no sense of how we can, as a country, uh, come together to be able to address some of the fundamental issues and then address some of the specific sectorial areas that we've, we've highlighted. Sayed Kayum also spoke at length about the government's budget allocations and why there is a need to invest heavily in infrastructure and education. As government, we are now concerned because that's now a recurring cost. That education budget will probably remain the same now. We all want better medical services. That has to increase. Everybody loves the roads, but the moment you're going to cut back on uh, the budget on roads, apart from doing a few things smarter, people will say, oh, they're no longer investing in infrastructure. We've created some legitimate expectations, if you like. The CPA Congress has attracted an impressive lineup of speakers from within the country and overseas. The Congress ends tomorrow. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Land Force Commander Colonel Siti Veningilio has urged people who may have information or are part of the alleged military-style training with firearms in the Western Division to come forward and cooperate with the police. Gilio made the comment as the military deployed 140 soldiers to assist police in the investigation. Madhyum Bolaitamana has more on the story. As the numbers of security forces members have been beefed up, Land Force Commander Colonel Sitiven Ingilio is calling on the public to cooperate with them in the investigations. Going into hiding or anything of that nature will just complicate matters for those that are involved. So if you have any information uh, and uh, you've been involved on the wrong side of the road, you make yourself available to the police. Or there are military camps around Fiji, military personnel around in the area, you make yourself known to them and they will hand you over uh, to the police who have uh, the investigating authorities in this case. Gilio has assured the public that everything is under control. Uh, we want to assure the public uh, that uh, they uh, have nothing to worry about. Like the Commissioner of Police had said, everything is under control. We are being proactive here. Uh, that military-type training has been conducted. Uh, well, we are being proactive in moving uh, to the West, beefing our numbers in the West, that we don't have weapons in the wrong hands. Gilio declined to be drawn into any discussions on the alleged use of firearms 
including whether if any has been spotted anywhere. 63 people have been charged with alleged seditious activity and with the joint military and police investigations, a few more are expected to be produced in court. Madhim Boleitamana, FBC News. And this afternoon, another suspect was produced in court, taking the total number of people charged for alleged seditious activities to 64. William Mbaravilala has been charged with one count each of sedition and urging political violence. He appeared in the Rakiraki Magistrates Court. The state asked for the accused to be remanded in custody due to the seriousness of the charges and a continuing police investigation into the use of firearms. Mbaravilala has been remanded in custody until Wednesday, when the matter will be called again for mention. Chief Justice Anthony Gates has ordered that the summons to strike out the case of suspended opposition parliamentarian Ratunanga Malalambalavu be served today. Justice Gates also ruled this afternoon that any affidavits in opposition to the summons be filed and served by the 1st of September. The case deals with the powers of the Speaker of the House and her constitutional duties, as well as the rights of the opposition members of Parliament. Ratunangama is challenging his suspension from Parliament. The case will be recalled on the 27th of next month. Sudelpa MP Moses Mbulitavo will decide tomorrow about a deadline. He has given the Sudelpa Management Board for the party leader Rote Mumukepa to resign. Bulitavo told FBC News from Lombasa he has been advised by party president Ratunaingama Lalambalavu to await his return to the country to solve the impasse. Bulitavo is unhappy with an audit report into the opposition office, which he says alleges misuse of a government grant intended for MPs' constituency work. He had called for an investigation into the report and for those implicated to resign by tomorrow. Once we come to Friday, then I think uh, we'll have to come back to the media on uh, whether that deadline is still there and, uh, and uh, what could be the changes that could be coming after that in order to facilitate the best way forward for the party. Uh, at least uh, there are processes to be followed. Ratanayangama is currently in Sydney, Australia. The Public Service Commission has finalized the appointment of a company to recruit permanent secretaries. PSC Chairman Vishnu Mohan says an announcement will be made soon. Akusita Tale has more. The government is trying to engage the best people for the positions of permanent secretaries in various ministries. The PSC, which is tasked with hiring the permanent secretaries, has turned to a human resources consultancy firm to assist in the recruitment. We are just about to finalize a recruiting company to do that for us. We want to do a thorough local and international search. We want to reach out to those Fijians uh, who are, there are many who are very well qualified. Uh, who are living in uh, uh, countries outside Fiji. PSC Chairman Vishnu Mohan adds the company specializes in recruiting foreign service personnel and has a good record in other countries. Our objective is to go and uh, select the best candidates uh, for the job because then we want them to come here, be CEOs for each of the ministry and be able to attract again top quality people to the ministry. The company is expected to be named soon and the recruitment process for permanent secretaries will follow after that. The contracts of the current permanent secretaries have been extended till the end of the year to allow time for the recruitment process to take place. Akusita Tale, FBC News. In the news ahead, USP Academics says it's now time to lobby for reduction of carbon emissions.
29-year-old carpenter from Sakoda outside Suva has been remanded in custody in relation to the death of an 87-year-old man. Charles Ronil appeared at the Nasino Magistrates Court this morning charged with one count each of murder and theft. The case has been transferred to the Suva High Court where it will be called for mention on the 28th. The victim's daughter found the body of her elderly father inside their home when she returned from work last Saturday afternoon. Police say the door of the house was left open and some items were stolen. Sea level rise is a real threat to the Pacific region and is an issue used by scientists as tangible proof of climate change. An academic at the University of the South Pacific, Professor Elizabeth Holland, says the time to act is now and lobby for a legally binding commitment to fix global carbon emissions at the Paris COP21. Maggie Boyle with this report. A meter of sea level rise is almost the full length of this paddle. And that's what we'll have by the end of this century. Professor Elizabeth Holland is adamant that the scientific data supporting the realities of climate change is obvious. We know what Pacific Islanders know every day, that the climate is changing. And we know that not just from one village being flooded, from one village, Fumitangoloa, needing to be moved, or the move of Narikosa. We know that from many different lines of evidence. We know that from the temperature record in the oceans. We know that from the temperature record on land. We know that from the glacial record. We know that from the rising CO2. We know that from every way that we look at the problem. Less than 100 days from the Paris meeting on the Conference of the Parties, Professor Holland will lead a handful of experts from the region to lobby for an international commitment on a carbon emission quota. In Fiji, more than 800 communities have been affected by climate change, with 45 villages earmarked for relocation this year alone. In the Pacific, climate change destruction is displacing entire countries. You see the El Nino that led us to have a pearl necklace of typhoons across the North Pacific a few weeks ago. You see the El Nino that will soon be manifested in the summer of 2015. Professor Holland made the presentation this week at the Science and Culture Week at USP, delving into climate adaptation and the South Pacific experiences and perspectives. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Firefighters from the 16 fire stations are competing in a skills test for the chance to represent the country at the Australian National Firefighting Competition in October. Eleanor Thurangai View with this report. The first ever national fire drill competition got underway in Suba today with about 100 firefighters showcasing their skills. There's a lot of benefits in uh, doing such a competition uh, as such. Uh, I believe uh, in the, the RFMF uh, it's called uh, the Force Skills Competition. Uh, so this is a, a similar event that we're holding within uh, the National fire, fire Authority and something that is done also uh, worldwide. Firemen are tested for their coordination, teamwork and knowledge of how to use various firefighting appliances. It enhances uh, the knowledge of uh, staff uh, within uh, the firefighting family. It supplements up uh, their, their skill sets uh, and uh, most importantly builds uh, on morale and uh, spirit deco within uh, the National Fire Authority family. The winning team will go back to training to take part in a similar competition in Victoria, Australia. There are also plans to send a team to a similar competition in Singapore towards the end of the year. Eleanor Turangivu, FBC News. Recognizing the outstanding achievement of small and medium enterprises is important for enhancing and developing the economy. Fiji National University Vice Chancellor Professor Ian Rao says such events will benefit various business operators. Ali Kimbia has more. The Fiji Development Bank SME Awards has been created to reward very small and medium business owners. The awards were launched by Fiji National University Vice Chancellor Professor Ian Rouse today. These annual awards have been created as a recognition mechanism for small and medium enterprise entities who, sometimes against almost insurmountable odds, 
continued to thrive because of the tenacity and the determination of their operators. They are certainly worthy, in my view, of praise and commendation for their efforts. With the theme, Courage, the sure step to success, FDB is hoping that Fijians will invest more in starting a business for a better future. I've always been of the view that anyone who starts a business deserves a medal. One can have all the requisite tools of starting a small business, but without the vela to take the first step, everything counts for nothing. A total of 15 awards and $36,000 in prize money are up for grabs this year. There are five categories. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Sports Now, here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening in sports. After the break, primary schools netball plead for support and we take a look at what the flying Fijians were up to today. This and more coming up. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. I have a problem with my problem. I have a problem with my problem. I have a problem with my problem. I have मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर 9 से 12 बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट Today, the Vodafone Flying Fijians went through one of its toughest training sessions to date. The coaching staff hammered the players in a bid to ensure they are match ready for the Rugby World Cup. Indra Singh reports. It was a mud bath, but this did not hold the Flying Fijians back earlier today as they were taken through their phases by the coaching staff. Oh, look, I don't think we were killing them, but we certainly wanted to get through, through a really hard work session today, and, and we really think that sessions like this and we'll probably do another three before the Rugby World Cup will really help top our fitness up. Plus it gets us working our rugby skills under fatigue. The session was not only to drive all the cobwebs out, but simply put, getting ready for the World Cup. Yeah, yeah lift yourself, push yourself hard, this is when it really counts, that's, that's what we've got to do. We, we can't be a really good team for 60 minutes and, and back off towards the end of the game because we, we haven't got the, the fitness to go the distance or the, or the, or the fight in our, in our bodies. The only player who missed out and remained clean throughout the training was hooker Sunia Koto, but there are no major concerns for him by the coaching staff. Oh, not really. Look, he's got a bit of a tight hamstring, so it was better to I me. Mean, you see, he did a, did a hard session of just fitness on the side. We just wanted to keep him off running today. By this time tomorrow, the players will know if they have made the cut for the World Cup, and that is just the beginning of a tougher task which lies ahead. But the self belief of the players and the work we're putting in now will hopefully put us in good stead. Twenty-four hours from now and we shall know who will be our flying Fijians to the Rugby World Cup. It's all done and dusted. There will be a final training session tomorrow. And after that, John McKee names his gladiators to fly the Fijian flag in London and Wales next month. Who will it be? We'll find out tomorrow afternoon. One thing's for sure, the 31 selected have a big task on their hand. Interesting, FBC Sports. And with that announcement tomorrow, some will receive their reward for the last four years of sacrifice, while a few will have to wait a little bit longer. Indra Singh spoke with two players fighting for that reward after a not-so-pleasant 2011 World Cup campaign. The pain of 2011 is still fresh in the minds of two players who played in New Zealand and the duo are out to make amends in 2015. I'm, uh, I'm just happy to be back, back with, uh, with the national team, uh, training squad. Back in 2011, we, we did lack a few areas. And then uh, back now, now that we are moving forward, everything's been, uh, been, been improved, especially the coaching staff has come on, on board. Lovon Balavu had all but lost hope of playing this year because the past two years as well hasn't been kind to him. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, uh, it's been a tough road for me. After 2011, I've had uh, I've been injured for almost two years, and uh, uh, I've done my rehab, and uh, I'm uh, excited to be back in the in the group. Maafu says the input of the coaching staff in 2015 is something which is a bonus for the flying Fijians, and they have learnt a lot. 
Uh, guys have uh, really contributed to uh, to our success in the PNC and stuff like that. Like uh, guys like Tabsy, um, Tabo Matson, uh, Alan Miller, uh, Francois Lidke, and uh, and uh, even John McKee. The prop knows too well the competition in the front row club is tight because all the big boys of the team are fighting for a spot. As Dan and Ise and uh, and uh, Joeli, so um, up front, you know, there's a lot of competition there. Lovon Balavu is also well aware of the competition for places in his position, with several season campaigners in the mix. Yes, we've got a good depth in the midfield. I think it's uh, all around the, in every positions, and uh, yes, in the midfield we have. Um, healthy competition in the group. So it's time for putting the ghosts of 2011 to rest and this starts for these two with the naming of the Flying Fijians tomorrow night. Interesting, FBC Sports. And a reminder that you can watch the Flying Fijians team naming live on FBC TV from 6.30pm tomorrow. Lautoka Rugby was crowned overall winners of the Crest Western Primary School's Rugby Festival after defeating Nandi 5-0 in the under-14 grade last night. The Maroons also scooped the under-9, under-10 and under-12 titles, while Nandi won the under-11 and under-13 categories. Meanwhile, in the girls' division, St. Thomas won the under-10 title, Vunda won the under-12, and Vitonga walked away as under-14 champions. The two-day tournament was held at Prince Charles Park, Nandi. The Fiji Primary Schools Netball Association is pleading for financial support from potential investors wanting to help grow the sport at junior level. Officials say there is so much they want to do to build on the high interest from young players and need corporate sponsors to facilitate some of those plans. has more. The high turnout of young players at the Kachi netball competition gave a good indication about the interest from young players. But beneath all the sweat and school pride, the primary school's netball body is finding it difficult to run this tournament without the much needed funds. Uh, we are struggling to get a major sponsor for primary netball and uh, I'm urging to those companies out there, this is where netball starts. This is where we can, win our world, uh, we can get a better position in the World Cup, in the grassroots level. Invest on us. There is good representation of teams from all corners of the country. The positive for players who excel during the tournament is that there is a pathway available to expose their talents to a bigger audience next year. In this tournament, we are going to elect 30 under 11 and under 12 players that we will trim down to 15 in December, which we will take to Australia in December next year. Uh, so we are looking at netball, not finishing at IDC level, there's something else there for our girls to look forward to, and that is exposure overseas. There is hope in the Fiji Primary School netball sorority that some goodwill can prevail in order to uplift the development of the sport in the country. Silent Otakataka, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji football team defeated Tonga 5-0 in a friendly match last night. The Carlos Buzetti side had a strong start after Malakai Tiwa scored the opening goal, followed by Alvin Singh and Osea Vakhtalisau. Fiji led at halftime 3-0. Tiwa then scored his second goal to extend Fiji's lead in the second half before Napoleon Incasvacatini scored one more to seal the victory. The match was held at Govind Park Mba. That was your sports for tonight. Good evening. <laughs>《Sugar Corporation has secured a new buyer for raw sugar. FSC Executive Chair Abdul Khan says the Romanian-based company Agrana will buy 35,200 tons of sugar in its first shipment. Khan says the company operates in Singatoka as Agrana Fruit Fiji Limited, involved in food processing and packing. The Agrana Group is a food company based in Vienna, Austria, that produces sugar, starch, fruit preparation, juice concentrate and ethanol fuel. It has 50 facilities based around the world. Fine weather conditions apart from brief showers were experienced over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands today. A trough of low pressure extends southeast from the Sol Solomon Islands to Vanuatu. Meanwhile, an east to southeast wind flow prevails over most of the southwest Pacific region. Suva only managed a maximum of 24 degrees today, while the other centers recorded slightly higher temperatures. Savo Savo hit 27, Nandi recorded 28 degrees, and Lautoka hit 31. 
Forecast to midnight tomorrow for the Fiji group, occasional showers over the southern parts of the group. Brief showers over the eastern and interior parts of the main islands, elsewhere fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Heading into Saturday, occasional showers over the southern parts of the group, some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere afternoon or evening showers. And recapping our main stories, Fiji needs a marketplace with new and innovative ideas in order to keep moving forward. Another suspect has been produced in court in relation to alleged seditious acts in the Western Division taking the total number of people charged to 64. And Chief Justice Gates ordered this afternoon that the summons to strike out the case of suspended opposition parliamentarian Ratanangama Lalambalavu be served today. To our poll question, we're asking, do you think the Hibiscus Festival is up to the standards of the previous years? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night.